put themselves in a situation, have to put them in a situation to whereas black people are being maximized on television. So how do you get max? Now you get to set that money out and make people think, oh, they're on our side. And, and now people are start watching more television. Black people watch more television because we got people on a lot of shows. That's why this diversity comes about. That's why things like that are happening. It's not because of some come to Jesus moment that these capitalists have had. No, because if black and brown people, I am speaking about the Latino people, if they're sitting in front of TV more, they need to have more representation to keep them focused. And if you put them on TV more and they're more focused, then you get more Chevy commercials, more Diet Coke commercials on whatever you're trying to sell those commercials come about and when you see those commercials we go on buy we impulse buyers we have a we we can't keep the money in our pocket in our community and things of that nature but i would suggest that you do that either way because they gave tyler perry all these bet shows you got snowfall on fox you got uh, uh it's this is uh Sh shonda rhymes on abc you got somebody on nbc you got uh such entertain on cbs and things of that nature this is what you have to be be cognizant of they're not trying to help you they're just saying this is what's going on we need you we need to rock with you because you are where the money at like the dude who got rich a couple of months ago making that commercial where the money reside where the money reside yeah that's why he got rich because hey where the money reside the money resides in our community the money resides in our community and we need to be aware of what's going on so to destroy things and make it harder and again, to use the uh, part of the country that my man Demarcus is from, they destroyed in 1992-93, they destroyed the entire South Central shopping areas. So now, as they're shopping, they are putting themselves in a situation to where as they have to go to unsafe neighborhoods now. Neighborhoods that they're unwanted in. Now, now the police are harassing them. And again, man, if you are around people who don't understand this, why try to convince them? You... Would you try to convince somebody that the sky is blue? No, you wouldn't. So if you're wasting your time, you need to inform your young people. You need to inform your parents. You need to inform the people that are around you of what's going on who are willing to listen to you, who are willing to pay attention to what you're saying, not just engage with these damn fools. See, I'm going to show them because you can't show a damn fool. It's, it's this saying that my grandfather used to say, what do you tell somebody with two black eyes? Nothing. They've been told twice. So why are you beating your head up against the wall trying to convince them? Understand, more than likely, this cop is not going to go to jail. And when that cop don't go to jail, if you're not gearing up for, with a passport and, 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 and things of that nature, what you want to do is make sure America is the most comfortable place possible. Stop talking about what's wrong. Stop talking about, don't talk about, don't just come to Ace Rap Show. Don't come to the end of the bench and listen to what I got to say and say, and then text me afterwards or email me afterwards or hit me up afterwards on Twitter and say, that was some good shit, H. Rap. What you need to be doing is talking to three or four friends and get them to tune in. And hopefully you can say, this is what we're going to do. We're going to start investing in Bitcoin together. We're going to start investing in this together. We're going to learn, you know what, some of these scammers, how do you know about these things? Hey, scammer, teach me that. Uh, yeah, I'm going to give you a couple hundred dollars to teach me that. Because there's a, there's a few things on that, that, that uh, website that they're getting scammed on. Teach you how to open up a business and teach you how to get money from the government to run that business. So it's free. So what we're going to start doing is working together. And we're going to follow the Republican blueprint. And what we're going to do is use it that way. But we're not going to let none of the money come out of our community. Period. See, you don't fight fire with fire. Salute to our ancestor, the great Fred Hampton. We don't, you don't fight fire with fire. You fight fire with with whatever you need to do to get things resolved. So if they shoot at me, of course your nature is to uh, fire back. I'm not telling nobody to lay down. No, please don't shoot me. But what I am doing is when they galvanize to get things against you, you galvanize to work those things and put them in another direction. I'm going to keep saying this. I'm going to say this to the day I die. It's 45 to 50 million people in this country from our community. It's not 45. I don't think it's 45 to million, 50 million people of another community, just a solo community. We're not going to call it white people. Is it 45 to 50 million, million Greeks, Italians, French, Portuguese, Spanish, English, Irish, German? No. So if we work together, we can accomplish anything. 
You're talking about a group of people who four, one, two, three, four years out of, out of bondage were in governmental jobs. They were in leadership positions. You don't learn that in school, though, do you? You do not learn that in school. Four years out of bondage because we were not slaves. You are not a descendant of a slave. You're a descendant of a human being that was a prisoner of war who was enslaved. So stop calling yourself a slave. Now, if you can do that, Charles Drew, not even 100 years out of slavery, with the hard get down. You got people inventing things. Only thing they invented was the uh, patent office so they could steal stuff from people like me and you. So, you got uh, uh, Morris Brown, Bishop in AME Church. You got a university there in Atlanta, Georgia. So, what we got to do is stop falling for the propaganda. Me and my, my, my new homie, TC. Shout out to TC. Shout out to Rob Orr. Uh, Jaw Jackets tomorrow morning. Shout out to my brother, Ernest. Please tune in to him tomorrow at 7 p.m. So, as I was stating, if you could come out of hundreds of years of bondage and be four years away, and four years later you're in the government, some of that ain't adding up. Hold it. You mean my brothers and sisters, my ancestors, were in bondage for a couple hundred years, or four years after that, they had, they learned how to read, and they learned how to be in government? That's part of the lie right there. In the 1800s, and in the 1700s, there used to be this thing called the Negro Conference. It was brothers and sisters. I'm going to get the book for y'all next week. I, I, I meant to get it this week. It's called the Negro Conference. Just for the record, you got brothers like Booker T. Washington that was there. I mean, uh, 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 not Booker T. Washington. You had brothers like Langston Hughes' grandfather and the grandfather of our great ancestors, W.B. Du Bois. These people were free ancestors who were walking about free and they had a conference like a black expo on reparations in the late eight, uh, 1700, early 1800, 40 years before slavery. So when you hear that all we were was slaves, this is why I'm asking, stop referring to yourself as descendants of slaves. Because when you refer to yourself as less than, you have a less than mentality. And you have a less than mentality. You think it's a ceiling. And there is the, the sky is the limit and the limit is the sky. So this is why I continue to press these things. And if you and, and I'm not saying this just because he showed up. Start tuning in to collect the perspective. He's going to tag me in. Y'all do a lot of y'all my Facebook friends. And if you're not, reach out to me at Brian D. Williams on Facebook. And tag, I'll tag you in. Listen to the brother Ernest. Listen to the brother uh, uh, Dan, Kelvin, and my brother Robert Orr tomorrow evening. These are kind. Of, these are the kinds of conversations that they are having to enlighten you. The brother Robert Orr is me. Uh, uh, the homie Rob. I'm uh, uh, the brother Ernest. Me and Robert Orr refer to him as the Guru. The brother is deep. He's spiritual. He's academic. He is. He's empathetic. This is a good brother to follow. I'm glad to call him a new friend as well. But these are the things that you need to know about because when you find out. That there are no limits to what you can do. And if my people were walking around in the United States of America as independent, free thinking men and women, not slaves, not forced into anything, not not forced into destruction, it'll let you know, yeah, I grew up in the hood, but I don't have to be a gangster. I could be a square and I could invent something. I could develop something. I could create something. I could learn how to code. Rap What's coding. Remember, I told y'all, I'm not going to be giving you all the answers. I'm going to lead you down rabbit holes so you can find out what coding is. Coding is why you can see me and you can hear me and you can see digital uh, formats. And that's why you can get into that with nothing more than a high school education. If you can code, you can code, go to Amazon.com and buy coding for dummies. Then you can buy other coding books and develop it and you will be needed as well. Another rabbit hole for you, brothers and sisters. But this is why I'm telling you these things, because I need you to understand there's power in numbers, first and foremost, and there's power. The ultimate power is self-power. And where do you get self-power? It's because when you can look, when you look around your house and you say, hey, my sister could play the flute. My father could play the drums. My uncle could play the piano. What can I play? That's when the light goes off and you move forward. When you see your ancestors were more than just people who were captured and prisoners of war, then you will go, guess what? If they could do it, so could I. 
That's the purpose of this show, brothers and sisters. So back to the situation. The re- I'm not trying to wage war against the police. I'm not trying to do any of that. What I am trying to do, if I'm not, if I'm sorry, I ain't acknowledge up. DJ Purpolicious in the building, Bill Fitness Network's own DJ Purpolicious. Thank you for joining the show. Uh, if I didn't, if I didn't acknowledge you, I apologize. And if I did, that's just more love for you. Now, this is why. This is some things I want you to understand. Like I said, if this dude don't go to jail, I don't want you acting a fool and tearing up your stuff. Because guess what? Your grandmother, your grandfather, your cousin, or whoever got prescriptions, it's insulin, another thing. And you don't need to be out there in that COVID no way. So don't make it deep, more difficult on your family and friends because America's being America. This is something else I don't want you to fall for. You know, it's the old saying, stop falling for the banana in the tail. If you watch, watch Snowfall a couple other days, he was talking about it. But the ultimate banana in the tail pipe, thank you, Naisha Bunkley. Hey, uh, Saf- uh, uh, Sapphire, she makes candles. She's going to give me one of those candles, so I'm going uh, to end up raffling, raffling it off to y'all so we can shout with Naisha, too. Big ups to Naisha. One of, my, one of my entrepreneurial friends. Much love. Thank you for Naisha. Uh, but that's what I was saying, man. The banana in the tailpipe is on its way. I'm not anti-cop. I'm not anti-damn thing. I'm pro-me. If you look like this, or if you're a human, if you have a humanitarian mind or spirit, I'm with you. If you don't, I'm, I'm not for negotiating with you. I'm not, ah, man, kumbaya. I don't know the words to that song. I've never learned the words to that song, and I'm never going to try to learn, learn the words to that song. But what I am going to do is bring this to our attention. I need us to stop doing a few things. Inevitably, over the next few weeks, because it's starting to get cold, in Chicago, it is unseasonably warm. It was 61 degrees at one point today. But, this is what I want. I don't want to see none of these people. If you see one of these videos and you share it, if it come down my timeline, I'm unfriending you. And that's how serious I am about this. One of these cops at the cookout. Uh, 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 electric sliding. Am I anti-cop? Well, I, that's a bad question. I am. But it, do I hate the cops? No. That, that's a lie, too. You know what I mean. I don't like them. That don't mean you don't have to. Have your own relationship with them. But what I am anti is BS. I'm anti-BS, and I don't see no videos with no cops playing basketball with the bro- little young brothers, buying ice cream with the young brothers, you know, hey, hey, hey let's just slide, none of that, because that gives you the impression, oh, all cops, you see, it's the bad seed, well, you know what, we got a whole, butt, a whole barrel of sunflower seeds dumped on our community, and we ain't got time to sift through the battles, so none of that. I don't want to see about no cops saving no babies from trees because they're trying to brainwash you into believing something that's not true. I'm just letting you know, you can believe it or not. Those, those are your choices. But I don't want to see that. The cookout cop, the ice cream cop, the singing with the kids, basketball cop, none of that. No propaganda. I don't want to see no propaganda in the community, y'all. And you might, a couple of y'all might have laughed when I said that, but that's serious, man. Because guess what? Why you don't see no boogieing cops in my neighborhood? I ain't, I've yet to see a boogieing cop. Never. I'm 50. I ain't never seen a cop in the middle of the street boogieing. Never. Not even no brothers. So, no, sir. We're not going with the boogieing cops. We're not going with the disco cop. We're not going with the ice cream and cool cop. And the, and the most important thing. The most important thing, I don't see no cops at the cookout getting no damn plates, man. And I do I want cops to stop? No. Use your money, go get your ass something at lunch, just like I do when I'm at work. Take your ass a subway. And I'm not asking my brother and sister to feel the way about the cops as me. No. I have my own special relationship with the police, Chicago Police Department, and the police department throughout the United States of America. I got my own special relationship with them. And it's not that peaceful. So that's my issue with the cops. But what they try to do is desensitize you to what's what's really going on. Because no amount of training, brothers and sisters, how many of y'all got trained not to shoot somebody when you get scared? Nobody's had that training. So in order to not shoot somebody, all you have to do is see them as a human or something living. Because guess what? Most of us drive down the street and if you see an animal, a stray animal running in front of your car, you'll slow down, let the animal go. 
And you are, and most of us don't like hey, I don't like animals. If you ain't a dog, I don't really rock with you. And that's just that's my word. Uh, if you ain't a dog, eh, rats, lions, tigers, elephants, no. I walk through the zoo. I'm not, oh, let me touch them. No, don't want to touch them. It's cool to look at them, and that's it. But that's what I'm trying to say, man. These videos will start to surface. Do not share them. Because what you're doing is telling people it's okay to murder you. Am I being extreme? I don't think so. Because... That's what that's what's happening in our communities. They out here destroying our young people, destroying our women, destroying our brothers, and then a couple of dancing cops and the cops cool. They get the sandwiches and they being ice cream, and then you go, well, you know what, cops ain't that bad. Yeah, hey, until I meet ten thousand good cops, ain't hey, all y'all bad if you ask me, man. All y'all, man, because I don't want to see that, man. And guess what? If y'all remember this last year in New York City, you had a bunch of cops buying uh, uh, young brothers and sisters ice cream. And you saw them at the Black Lives Rally now, a uh, 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 march. And remember, they were standing there, you, we down with Black Lives Matter. And those same six officers were part of the insurrection January 6th. They were there. Oh, we ain't do nothing violent, but you were there. You decided that Eighty some million people who voted against the tyrannical practices of a one Donald J. Trump, President Trump, were fake. And you said, I'm going to go up here to support the people who do that, because you know what? Guess what? When Barack Obama used to support our brother right here in Chicago, Bishop Jeremiah Wright, salute to the to the, to the senior. He had to denounce him. When our, our senior, uh, the uh, the most honorable minister, Louis Farrakhan, he had to denounce him. So if any indication that you cool with our brother Farrakhan or our brother Wright is a is a is a is a damnation to you. You being at an insurrection is a damnation to you as well. We gonna play by the rules that are set in front of us, brothers and sisters. That's what we gonna do. We are not going to allow this nonsense to continue. That's what we not gonna do. Because when you do that, you continue to fall for the proverbial banana in a tailpipe. Because if I have to get rid of Barack Obama, guess what, Mr. President, you gonna have to get rid of David Duke and the Proud Boys. But you're not doing that, so we not doing it either. Because guess what, people like. Smith on ESPN and pe other people that's on TV who talk about that they're conservative and they're right thinking and they don't fall in line. We're not a monolith. Okay, cool. Since we're not a monolith, some of us love the Nation of Islam. Some of us love Jeremiah Wright. Some of us love Bishop, Bishop T.D. Jakes. Some of us love uh, 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 anybody who preaching. So, if we, some of us love Jeff Ford, Larry Hoover. So, if it's okay for you to like David Duke, it's okay for me to like any of those brothers, any of these what they used to call pork chop preachers in the United States of America. He's, he's saying what I think is cool. And that don't mean I'm prejudiced, right? You know, just like, just because I'm a Trump supporter don't mean you're racist, right? Well, but guess what? Most racists seem to like Donald Trump, but that's a whole other conversation for another day. With that being said, back to the first topic. In the Derek Chauvin case, just to continue the line of thought is this. One of the things that I found out recently with this Derek Chauvin case is this. The very first juror is not a fan of Black Lives Matter. And he's a fan of the police. And if you think you can get a fair shake in a fight like that, then you, are, you got more faith than me, man. You got more faith in this system than old ladies having Jesus. Please believe that. And I'm not rocking like that. I'm not saying be anti-anything, and I'm going to continue to say that. You know what? I'm not going to continue to say that. I'm not saying be anti-anything, and this is my last time saying this, hopefully, on my show. But what I am saying is what's good for you is equally good for me. So if you, don't want it to, if you don't want it to look one way for you, don't ask me to be the same way. So be aware, and then you can, you, you, you can move forward. Now, I got some good news, and that good news is this. Kenneth Walker. You don't know who Kenneth Walker is. 
That's the boyfriend of our late young ancestor, Breonna Taylor. She was transitioned by a police officer. And because her uh, boyfriend, they, they had their paperwork screwed up, they telling the world, and as I stated last week, they telling the world that her boyfriend was a drug dealer, and that's why she, uh, uh, that's why they shot up her house. I mentioned this on the Tuesday show where you got uh, instructors in high school level teaching these young people, don't be like Breonna Taylor, so don't go to sleep and relax. You don't want, do you want to be want us to be like Botham John either? Because he got shot for nothing too by cops. But what I want you to understand is Kenneth Walker, his case has been closed by a, a judge. And the reason we're talking about his case being closed by a federal judge is this. Because they left his case wide open so they can come back and re revisit it. So they can basically rain, uh, rain terror up over him. Because this is more than likely what I believe that they were going to do. They was going to lead it over his head. And if he ever got in trouble in his life, they were going to try to charge him with both of those things. Then offer him a lesser sentence sentence. So their conviction rate goes up and the scared brothers and sister rate goes up as well. This is what I'm asking you not to fear. This is why this is why I'm telling you, your vote matters in every situation, man. Every situation, your vote matters because when you don't have control of who are the circuit court judges in your area, the federal judges in your area, then somebody with a reasonable mind will not see this case and say, close this down. Enough of this. Enough of this. Close this down. You've destroyed this man's family. You've hurt this man. You, you killed this woman. You terrorized him with threats of prosecution. Enough. And you were wrong. If if they would if he would have been the drug dealer they were looking for, they might have a half a leg to stand on. If he was that, then they would have they may have a half a leg to stand on. But seeing how he's none of that. And he shot them in defense of himself. And they openly, they've had to prove that these people didn't announce who they were. Leave that brother alone. Shout out to the judge who dropped them charges. And the people who don't like it. You better shut your white mouth. I'm not kidding you. And I mean that. Shout out to the number one chief rock of Jersey, Vern. And shout out to my man, Kirby Alexander. For the, thank you for the support. Please hit that like button. Please hit that share button. Continue to support the network. Please uh, continue to show, uh, show support. For the show, mad love to all of y'all, man. If you want to contribute to the show, just put the cash app up on the screen. The cash app is the name of the show. The end, at, uh, dollar sign, the end of the bench. T-H-A-E-N-D-O-F-D-A-B-E-N-C-H. Anything that you can contribute will assist in, in, in the production of the show. So, hey, man, contribute. If you like what you're hearing, contribute. If not, man, just continue to listen, man. Much love. Now, one of the things that I want us to get engaged in politically about is this. Your record. See, a lot of people don't pay attention to their record. Because if I don't have no convictions, I'm cool. And, and in some states, that is the truth. But then in a lot of states, in a lot of states, if you're wrongfully accused of something, you go to court, you beat that case. And then uh, if you beat that case, what happens is this. You beat that case. And when they pull up your name for a background check, arrested for domestic violence. Me and you both know the two words together, domestic violence, you ain't getting that job. Your arrest records needs to need to be expunged as well. You are going to be on trial for your name for the rest of your life. Shout out to the homie J.H. Jabez. It's always good to see you, brother. Thank you for the support. And like I was saying, your arrest record, you need to contact your senators, your governors, you need to be on the phone with everybody about this because, brothers and sisters, you can get arrested for anything in the United States of America. And they'll trump up charges like they just did with our brother Derek Walker. He needs to be on the phone with them, too. He needs to be on the phone saying, move this uh, Breonna Taylor thing from my name because he got arrested, brothers and sisters. He got charged, brothers and sisters. Then the case got kicked out and then they, they dismissed the charges. But he is going to be charged. If you don't understand that my son is a junior. One time I had a physical altercation with a physician about my daughter. My son got arrested. Oh, you beat up a doctor. Came up on his name. Now, did I get convicted? No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. But it was brought to my attention. That's on my name. So I had to contact people and have that expunged. So we need to get on the phone with your alderman, if you have alderman. Your committeemen, if you have those, 
your state senators, your state representatives, and things of that nature, and get together and get these things removed from my name. Because when people do background checks, when you're pulled over, when excuse me, when you're pulled over by a police officer and he types up your name, violence come up. And guess what that leads to? Well, my name will be violence come up. And when that violence comes up, he's scared. So if he shoots me, he was in fear of his life, remember? Remember? He ain't in fear for his life because that's what they do all the time. And I will say this one. If I say this once, I'll say it 10,000 times. You cannot train out the fact that you are willing to murder me with no effect in your day. Because all I have to say is I'm scared. I'm scared. I'm scared for my life. That's why I killed him. He's a big black guy. He's six foot, almost six foot tall. He's 260 pounds. I was in fear of my life. And then you're murdered. Because when he pulled my name up, violence is on them. Was I convicted? No. Do it out of court. No contest. Hey, get out of here. But it's there. And then when it's there, it comes up on my name. And then the cop, because they ran my name before they even got to my car. Because they ran my car. So who's the owner of the car? He got this. Okay, cool. Bam. Just like with my son. When they arrested my son. They're not supposed to run your place until you break the law. They unlawfully ran my son's place and found out he has a concealed and carry. Where's the what they walked up to us kind of asking, where's the weapon? I thought you weren't supposed to run my place until I did something wrong. This is a random stop, right? So what you run my place for? Again, see, everybody's supposed to be stupid enough not to know the law. When you know the law, you're dangerous. And when you're dangerous, you're going to eat. You know, it is what it is. When you're black and dangerous, you might not be here tomorrow. When you're white and dangerous, you got a better chance to make it. You got a great chance to make it tomorrow. But these are the things that you want to be aware of. These are the things that could have stopped you from getting a job. You had no clue. This is why you didn't get that job because they did. This and you had an erroneous, you had an erroneous uh, uh, arrest on your, you know, a, a domestic violence charge. But that was just because the girl was mad at me, or I got we were arguing. If you don't believe me, Rod Smith, former National Football League, a wide receiver, potential Hall of Famer, Rod Smith, girlfriend in Denver, Colorado, called the police because they were arguing. They were yelling. Rod Smith got charged with domestic violence. Did never lay a hand on this woman. Rod Smith go to jail for domestic violence. Domestic violence. He had to plead out to a lesser charge, but at the end of the day, that's on his name forever. And Rod Smith, as far as I know, has never hit a woman. Another thing we need to be working on: these voter right, voters' rights. Now, how many of you people are familiar with the 1954? Voting Act, uh, 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 Civil Rights Act of uh, 1954 judgment in regards to civil rights and segregation. They made separate but equal legal, right? But what they did, they put into play is we could be over here and y'all could be over there separate but equal. So we, we, you're supposed to get the same amount of money. What they're doing is putting that to the test now because if we have equal voting situations over here, and y'all got equal voting situations over there, we going to diminish your ability to vote. We're we going to use the law against you. This is why you always have to be paying attention. I posted this in my group, uh, Build and Destroy, where I'm building up the community, destroying the lies and propaganda. And we're going to talk about it now. This is why me and you and everybody else that looks like us and everybody who want to fall into that category or purposely fall into that category of minority, this is why you need to be paying attention to S1. It's uh the reason it's S1 because it's now in the Senate and it used to be H uh, 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 HR1 because the House of Representatives had to vote on it and now it's S1 because the Senate has to get hold to it. You need to be on the phone with your people who you voted for who are there speaking for you and understand that you do not want the anti-voter right of protection to the voter right protections to get shut down. Because under this, this is why you wouldn't be able to give somebody. Okay. 
80 percent of the black people use the ability to vote on the weekend. Eighty percent of the black people used to vote on Sunday to uh, uh, do that. We we gonna limit voting on Sunday. We gonna limit a uh, 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 right in vote, uh, absentee voting. You gonna have to have an act of God for absentee voting. You gonna have an act act of God for all of this. And we even gonna reduce it to the fact that because you know we turned it into a situation down there in in Georgia last time. Sister Stacy Abrams salute to Sister Stacy Abrams uh, uh, and other people. Our sister Brown, I can't think of her first name, her last name, Brown. Uh, Black Votes Matter. What they was doing was renting buses, turning into a situation, food trucks up there. So you in, you out there waiting six, eight hours to vote. You get something to eat while you're out there. They trying to make that illegal. All you have to do is vote, go for the John Lewis Voter Rights Act, get that passed. Uh, President Biden, you was talking about what you've done in your first 30 days, in your first 60 days. I'm going to need you to pass that John Lewis Act. Well, uh, right. That anti-lynching act. See, because you got dumbasses like Herschel Walker and others to uh, uh, to try to shoot these things down. I ignore racism. It'll go away. Well, when is it going to go away, Herschel? See, just because these doofuses can run up with a football in their hand, don't mean you can speak for me, man. I'm going to need you to shut the hell up. Just speak for humanity. If you're going to speak, speak for human beings. Don't speak as part of our community, speaking against our community. I have no time for that. None. But we need to start talking about these things. These are the things that are, they are trying to bring, wind the clock back to Jim Crow. And, and Jim Crow didn't affect anybody but me and you. Let's talk about feminism. The feminists don't affect the sisters. Because guess what? We, they wanted to write the vote. Sisters been... Uh, uh, they wanted to write their work. Sisters been working since the end of bondage. Sisters ain't never had no problem getting up working. Because they used to take care of your damn kids and they was cooking your damn meals. So don't talk about no, we can't work. That's your, that's your fight. That's your fight. I don't want to hear that. Because black women been working for the longest, homie. My grandmother, my great-grandmother, 17 cent a year. Sharecropping. My great-grandmother. So I want to hear that. So this feminism, we take, we looking out for the sisters. Yeah, is that why when uh, President Trump was elected at the inauguration, the day after the inauguration, y'all did a, a, a woman's march, and then none of the sisters, like Tamika Mallory and those sisters who were out there in the street, Stacey A. from them, they, none of them got the invite. Oh, uh, we forgot. Okay, we're going to forget to support y'all. Is that the reason T T uh, Trayvon Rice, uh, Tamir Rice, uh, Trayvon Mar, Tamir Rice, Mike Brown and all these other brothers who've been shot cold blooded in the street. Y'all wasn't there at those rallies either. Oh, y'all forgot y'all forgot to get the memo. Okay. But so sisters, we're not doing that. We're not doing that. That's what I'm saying, man. You you can say what you want to say, do what you gotta do, and believe what you wanna believe. But we're not going down with that no more, man. My, I got a sister here in Chicago, good friend, Ron Wanda. I'm cry I bet you I call Wanda right now. Well, I didn't get no calls from no damn uh, uh, women's groups when the police killed our son. So, don't tell me about no feminism. You know, uh-uh. This this us, man. So, we got to get work on that anti-lynching bill and S1 to be passed so they can stop the voters' the voters uh, 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 suppression and the anti-lynching bill. This anti-lynching bill been on the table for almost 100 years. 100 years, man. I salute to my man Ben from Bear Street. He on the show with me on uh, Monday night. Call forecast. Salute to my good brother. Yo, your boy out here busy, man. We trying to entertain. We trying to enlighten. <laughs> we trying to entertain. We trying to enlighten. And yeah, I do laugh, man. I might be the silliest guy you ever meet, but I'm having fun at this. But I just feel that we need to talk about these things. I need to get this information to you. I need to make this handily available to you so you can be armed with information, man. Anytime you're armed with information, you put yourself in a situation to where as you will win. Period, man. That's all that's gonna happen. You're gonna win. Because with that, without this information, you will continue to be duped, tricked, bamboozled, led astray, run amok, and had. Yeah, I, I was a little cliche, but it's the truth. It's the honest to God truth. People are not being fair with us, so we need to galvanize. And Stop falling for the banana in the tailpipe. 
You know how Joe Biden signed that bill early, or one day early? The reason our President Joe Biden signed that bill one day early because the news of Natchez, Mississippi and Jackson, Mississippi not having power, not having clean water and things that are natural, necessary to be a prominent human being in the United States of America, those things were not addressed. Not just Mississippi, population 87% black. Jackson, Mississippi, population 80% black. Nobody's talking about those things. But the whole world knew about when Texas shut down, right? The whole world knew about that. See, this is why you must have proper representation. The state of Mississippi is 34% black. 34%. I doubt if any other community has that many people in that state. You know, you got Native Americans, you got Latinos and other all sorts of people. We have enough people with the people who believe in the humanity that we display and the people who are, are, who are allies and us to run that state. That way we can get grids, electrical grids, power grid, electrical power grids for the gas, for your house, the power for your house. And then you got clean water. It's a brother who was up there in uh, uh, Flint who figured out a way to clean out their water. Why ain't that dude a quadrillionaire? We, we, we on some fat album numbers. He should have $11 million right now. He, he should have $11 billion. Where is he at? Why did you have people breaking in and destroying his equipment when he can keep us alive? But we not we not focusing. We're not educating ourselves. We're not being informed about these things. Our brothers and sisters in Mississippi, they need us, man. That's why them people, Sister Brown, uh, Shonda Brown, Tamika Mallory, uh, and it's, 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 it's literally hundreds of our brothers and sisters spearheading these campaigns to bring enlightenment to our brothers and sisters and put us in the best possible situation. And when you have that, they need our, they need our tools and fuels, man. They need our tools and fuels. We shoot them five, ten now. Don't don't buy a subway sandwich. Bring your lunch. Shoot that money down to those people. Black vote. Black voters matter. That's what you do. So you can help out people who look like you. See, well, what we're not hearing about is this. I keep this third week in a row. I've said it. The largest population of people that look like this look like this. The people that do this, they live south of the Mason Dixon line. The southern states is where we're heavily populated. What you don't hear about on, on the TV is there's a mass exodus from the north and the west back to the south. Land is cheap and we can put ourselves in a better situation. Just imagine if they do what we asked, like if, if the athletes do what I asked them to do, right? Kroger, three Kroger shut down due to not enough traffic. If the athletes buy, just, just Paul George and Kawhi Leonard. Paul George, Kawhi Leonard, and the brother Russ, Ru, brother Russ, Russ, Brother Russell Westbrook put their little tools and fuse together and buy those croakers in the L.A. That's going to cut down. That's going to close down. And then they got players. And that sister's a sister in confidence. Young sister, too, like 32, between 28 and 32. She owned a grocery store. What if they partnered with her? She knows how to run a grocery store. And we exclusively shop there. What if those same restaurants had food from Alabama, Mississippi, and Georgia from the black-owned farmers? Hmm, how about that? How about that? That's how we have to start thinking, man. We have to cooperative economics, collective everything, because nobody is trying to rock with us. Do we have allies from other communities? Hell yeah. But how about this? You know how you make a house? You build a floor. That's called the foundation. You set parameters. You create the, you got the design for every room and that that way you rocking like that then as you rock like that this is what you do you got wood you got mortar you got concrete you got everything to create these things and have insulation and things like that what we have to do is set up a foundation so then we can get all the other stuff to work properly if we don't have a foundation why would you help me and most important, as we are suggested to build these rainbow coalitions, 
when our brothers and allies from other communities get what they want, they go back to their communities with their own God, with their own language, with their own infrastructure, with their own education. And guess what? We are left with none and we get choked out. Because then we're complaining. And then you know what those people do? They look at you and go, why y'all didn't get y'all so we got ours? Reparations. Fair treatment. If you don't believe me, it's this one guy. He from, uh, I think he's from uh, Birmingham, Alabama. His name is Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. He was killed April 4th, 1968. He had a rainbow coalition. Where all the help? It's this other brother that lived down the street from my house. His name is uh, uh, Chairman. Fred Hampton, God rest both of their souls. When they were murdered, where's all the help? Am I telling people that they wrong? No. But people help their own. I'm going to help Chief Rocker. I'm not going to help help little boy over here that I don't know. They'll see Chief Rocker on the ground. Once we dust off Chief Rocker, you straight Chief? Well, then we go over there and help the little boy who, who's not part of our get down. But until me and Chief stands up, we, I don't know. Am I wrong for that? If you think I'm wrong, so. But I know I'm not wrong. Now, as I was stating, man, we must get our acts together in regards to this, man. There's nothing wrong with helping. There's nothing wrong with being uh, being a part of a coalition. But you cannot clean my house if your house funky as a goat. That's just what time it is, man. I'm sorry. We cannot do that anymore, man. We cannot do that anymore. The anti lynching bill, that the anti voter, the anti voters right uh, act, the S one, and, and and John Lewis anti lynching bill. We got to get that cracking right now, and then we got to start creating our foundation. It's another story that bothers me. I know. Only, see, this is why I created this show. This is why I do the show. They talking about raising minimum wage. How about you raise medium wage? Who the fuck wants to make minimum wage, man? I don't want to make minimum wage. Hey, I'm old enough to remember when I got my first job, little high school job, minimum wage is three thirty five an hour. I didn't want to make that be. Why are we talking about minimum wage? And why are y'all pretending that if they raise minimum wage, they're not going to raise the cost of bread and rent and all this other stuff? So we back at minimum wage. We back at struggling. How about this, man? Wait, raise median wage. Leave minimum wage where it's at for the high school kids. You know, we need a couple extra coins. You, you won't buy your own joys and video games. That's what you do. Who cares what you can't leave? Listen to what they arguing about. If I could pay you less, I would. And you want to even, why are we negotiating at the floor? Raise that single mama who like my mama, with a dead fiancé, raise her wage. Who busting her ass in college, raising three kids in our house. Raise her wage up. Who the hell wants to make me? I would give, tell you what. Stop paying people what they worth and what they contributed to your company, and we don't have to worry about what, who cares what minimum wage is. This is the backward thinking that we do, for people. Hey, uh, I want to raise the wage amount that if they can legally pay, make if I can legally make pay you nothing, I would. Like, like no, no offense to the uh, service industry. Like, if I could pay you and make you work off tips, like waiters and waitresses, I would. Why are we always starting off at the floor? Start off right here. Wait a minute, the CEO of this company. Makes $44 million a year. Uh, sports fans, Roger Goodell makes more than 99% of the players in the National Football League. He ain't tackled. He ain't ran. He ain't blocked. He ain't done nothing. Oh, well, he made the league. He took the league from a $100 million business to a multi-billion dollar business. When he got here, we was making a billion dollars a year. Now we're making $40 billion a year. So, if don't nobody show up for the Sunday and set, first Sunday in September, is Roger Goodell going to run his ass down there and run some plays? No. So, look, if 
you the CEO of Pepsi, Coke, McDonald's. I'm in here getting burned by this damn grease. This damn pot, I'm going home, smell like a damn brewery every day. I should be able to what I should be able to afford and live. You know what? Most of the dudes from a hundred years ago who created things, Henry Ford is who I'm thinking of. You know what he said? I'm gonna make this product and I wanna I wanna pay my people so they can afford it. So if all goes bad, the dude who made that car will go bad. Let's get that mentality back. Man, bro, we, we ain't got no time to be talking about no damn minimum wage. People out here starving. People out here busting their ass, celebrating for a motherfucking stimulus check. Damn that. And, and anybody who, yeah, yeah, Biden going to raise the minimum wage. To what? How about this? If they raise the minimum wage, if you make $20 an hour and you struggling, and they raise the minimum wage to $15 an hour, are they giving you a raise? No. No. So now what? I want to hear that. Yeah, I want to hear that, man. May raise the wages of the people who work every day. You know what? Even the dumbass cell phone companies got tired of other cell phone companies saying, we'll pay your way out if you come over here. Now AT&T go, hey, man, even if you're a new customer, better deal, come on, we're going to hit you with the new customer deal. If you if you stay with us, you can get the new customer, uh, customer rate. So I don't want to hear about no minimum wage. Raise that dude pay who been there three years. Raise that lady pay who been there 15 years. Raise that janitor pay that been there 20 years. That's how you make it work. The minimum wage. People, we have to start hearing what they're saying. Uh, if we can legally pay you less, we would. We're going to get you more. What kind of silly... St Knock it off, man. No more. No more. We're not falling for no more of these tricks, y'all. No more tricks. We are not doing that anymore. We are going to raise minimum wage. Like the homie J. Ron from Canada just said, square is $15. You know, I'm gonna pay. I'm gonna work an hour to get a pack of squares, which is squares cost more than crack, man. Listen to that, man. Cigarettes cost more than crack. A gallon of gas is what they probably pay half of what you pay. Uh, knock it off, fellas. People, we have to be aware of what's being said to us. Minimum wage. All oh, rap. You got. You don't want people to get more. No. I just want you to pay me. A good wage when I walk in the door. I used to work. Last job I had. Sitting at a desk. I got a six figure raise. I sat at the desk. Just like I'm sitting here right now. I said man. Excuse me. I was making six figures. I got a raise. So I was making six figures. I'm sitting at my desk. 36 years old. Thinking. Good lord. I, I made it. I'm on my way. And I looked over at the numbers. Then I realized, damn. In the last six months, I made them $4.8 million. And they're going to pay me this funky ass 110000 If I was selling ass, I would get a better rate. Hoes get a better rate than that. Hookers with a pimp. Get a better rate than that. A pimp would give a whole four hundred thousand if he made it four million. Now here, here you go. If I was selling crack, I would be killing it if I made some kingpin four million dollars in six months. I would have at least a million and a half. But I thought I was making it at a hundred and T. Listen to this, man. And you want to raise people fair up, their pay up to uh a hundred thousand dollars. I mean, uh, fifteen dollars an hour. People, if you ever want to know what somebody make, all you have to do is multiply whatever they make by two thousand eight. 
2080. That's how many hours the average person works a week without overtime. I mean, yeah, without overtime. 15 times 2008 ain't even $33,000. Shout out to Trey Natural. She in the building. Another entrepreneur that I uh, I that supports the show. Much love. If y'all don't want to, if y'all want to check in with a man, follow on that thing. Get at her on uh, Facebook. You know, it's mad love to her. It's my little sister. Man, good good people, man. And as I showed y'all, man, this 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 is what we doing on here, man. And and when I wrap up, that's brought to you by Trade Matches. You see it, man. It's on the screen. Support them, man. Go to Facebook. Support them, man. Quality product. Got your boy out here look good. And shell out here smelling good. That's how we doing, it, man. But uh, on the serious side, man. But for real, man. Um, listen to. Listen to what 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 is being said to you, man. We're gonna raise the minimum wage. We're gonna raise the we're gonna make it so you can just struggle. <laughs> Listen to that, dog. Uh we're gonna make it so you're just struggling. Not struggling like mom, but just struggling. Really? Oh, good luck. Good luck in our boat. Why well, be real good now, Mr. Cake? Get the fuck. Stop, man. We gotta stop this, y'all. We gotta stop. Stop this, man. It's, it's, it, stop listening to people and hear them. See, yeah. Uh, I mean, excuse me. Let's stop hearing what they're saying. Listening. Hearing is what God made. Listening is a cognitive choice. Like you chose to listen to my ass today. You know, you can hear anybody can just turn it on and walk away. But man, yeah, 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 like like my man, somebody just said, Jay, why won't the governor make minimum wage? Won't we get some of these damn uh, political people get their ass working at minimum wage? That's what we need to do. You cannot live off thirty two thousand dollars a year. You can, but you're gonna be the ramen noodles, high crunchy key, cheese curl eating this dude in the world or woman in the world. Think about this: if you get you a one hundred old lady. And you get your 100 old man, and you put them together at 15 on an hour. Y'all gonna be making what the average person living decent make with no kids. You know what I'm saying? So knock it off, man. It, yes, yes. These politicians. Yo, no, no, we need no, nah, man. But again. Goes back to the unity thing I keep telling y'all about, man. This is why unity is so important. Because if you shopping with your brothers and the sisters, and you start your own get downs, then you cool. Because if we working for number one chief rocker jersey firm at the at, at, at the at the rocker restaurant, and we working for the, at the trade naturals, and we working at JA grocery store, and we working at D Great. Liquor store, they not paying us fifteen dollars an hour. They paying us enough so we can boo wah boo wah 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 wah. But they not they, they hey hey man, this this the ultimate trick to keep you in poverty, man. Because if you don't think bread finna be four dollars if you make fifteen dollars an hour, you crazy as rich as spec. You crazy as all hell and all outside, boy. I'm telling you. Keep it up. You fighting for minimum wage. You fighting the struggle, man. You fighting the struggle. Another thing is this. This is information. We're going to talk about education. For the last five years, I've been on air. And I started preaching right around the NCAA tournament. Brothers need to start going to HBCUs. Now, with a little more enlightenment, I'm looking at the brother David West. Shout out to David West. I forgot the name of the industry he meant, uh, company he built. <laughs> David West, formerly of the National Basketball Association, David West, has an organization that's taking young, young athletes who want to have aspiration of being pro, uh, uh, pro what he's doing is this. You don't have to go to college. You're going to go be able to own your own image. 
make money off your own image, play in this league, you develop, and potentially go pro, right? From 16 to 22. They're going to be making $100,000 a year. $100,000 a year at 16, 17, 18, 19, 22, and 1 and 22. You also will have the option to go to a local or a trade or universities, trade school or university. This is going to be it's, it's set up to be just like college uh, athletics with basketball. And you will put yourself in a situation where you earn it for your folks. This is the moderate I like even more than going to HBCUs because you know why? HBCUs ain't for everybody. College ain't for everybody, man. Every, all of us are it's student enough to go to a university. We have the capacity to attend a university. But a university is not for everyone. And if and guess what? Be honest with yourself. If you can, you can put it in the chat room. You can hit your boy up or whatever. How many of us were truly ready for college? I was, talking, I was watching one of the homies today. He's on another podcast. He is a former CIA, DIA, and FBI agent. CIA. Uh, 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 Central Intelligence Agency, DIA, uh, Defense Intel, uh, 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 De this Defense Agency Intelligence, Defense Something Intelligence, and uh, FBI, Federal Bureau of Investigations. These are the people who protect us every day. He didn't know what he wanted to do. He was 25. And this dude was a master in those three ages. He is widely respected. He was on a podcast talking about the things that he learned, advantages that he got. But he didn't realize what he wanted to do until he was 30. Well, he was he said he started applying in 98, which made him 28. And he got the job in, no, in 90, uh, 2000. He got the job in 03. Listen to that. that made, he made him the same age. He was 33 years old when he got the job. He didn't figure out that's what he wanted to do until he was 31. So how could an 18-year-old, 13 years his junior, well, 15 years his junior, understand that? He can't. So with this new league, you'll be taught that you'll be given the responsibility of practicing, the responsibility of taking care of your family, the responsibility of trying to be the best possible athlete you can be, as well as having the money to do it. Having the money to do it. So, college isn't going to be the only way to do this. You can go the David West way. I got to find out. I got to think of it. I should have looked it up right now, man, because these are things that we need to support. You know, we need these are the things that we need to get behind. These are the things that need to be put into play with us. Because when David West is doing these things, man, he needs to be supported and he needs to be acknowledged as an excellent human being for coming up with these things, right? Because as he's coming up with these things, he's giving young people options. And if you're giving young people options, then it's on. And of course, they ain't got this online. No way. I'm going to find it for you because that's why you, that's why I'm here. I'm going to find it for you because that's why I'm here. I bought it to you, so I'm definitely going to bring it to you in that way as well, you know? Because uh oh the United States Basketball Association. That's what it is. I'm gonna get you this information. So continue to follow me at H Rap underscore B or follow me on at, on Facebook at uh Brian D. Williams. Send me a request. <coughs> Don't have no scantily dressed stuff because I, I I you know I'm not doing that. You know, look like a human being, I ain't following because if you dress too stupid. That means you're going to be talking about your baby daddy, and I don't want to see none of that nonsense. Look, you know what? Look for building destroy and go in there. Don't, don't, no, nah, I don't want to hear about your damn babies. But that's what I'm trying to get you to understand, man. There, there are options. There are options in regards to this because if David West had to, he had to wherewithal to help us out in this way, you don't have to go to a university. Because a lot of us are not academically inclined in that way. Some of us listen and learn by listening. Some of us learn by reading. Some of us learn by doing. And it's all lecture style teaching. So only 20% of us are getting caught by that. And if only 20% of us are retaining the information, what the hell are you doing in front of the class teacher? 
which puts me in another story this week. Two Georgetown professors get called on. See, this this is again, our ancestors continue to show us what time it is. We keep throwing our watches in the garbage, though. Oh, no, no, no. No, no, none of that. None of that. That's not really happening. That's just stuff that the woke or the, the silly Negroes are talking about. When our ancestors keep showing, you're going to keep seeing it over and over and over and over and over. But it's up to you to suck that in. Two white professors on Zoom. The ancestors made the Zoom thing work because otherwise you still would have people. And then there's still people going, oh, man, uh, that was just them two. Okay, let's just say it's one or two people at every university in the United States of America, historically white university in the United States of America. How many people have they discouraged? How many people have they put out of the mind state of being attorneys? How many people have flunked out of uh, colleges and universities throughout the United States of America because of two jerks like this? These two people, I might look it up. Yeah, I might, I might look it up. I might look it up. These two, this, this man and this woman talking about how most of the kids that are struggling are black kids and this, that, and the third. And uh, I didn't like, I didn't like shit at all. And this is what's happening is, you know, they get fired. And as Dr. Greg Carr said, they shouldn't have been fired. They should have been put on, uh, uh, they should have been put on blast. And when you put their ass on blast, they'll cut that nonsense out. And if they cut that nonsense out, then you stand a chance. But don't nobody want to talk about it, man. Don't nobody want to talk about it. I'm going to show y'all the two minutes of this. See if I get this on the split screen. No. Let me put it, put it on pause. Yeah, I found it, y'all. I found it, y'all. I'm going to play a little two-minute clip for y'all. Show y'all where the money reside. Where the money reside. You know, I'm going to show y'all where the money reside. That's what time it is. Yep. We're going to be able to put some of this nonsense on blast. No. We we got to show people this, man. We have to show. <coughs> we have to show and prove with these people because people don't have to, don't have our best interest in mind. I end up having this, you know, angst every semester that a lot of my lower ones are blacks. Ex-Georgetown law professor Sandra Sellers' conversation with Professor David Batson was recorded on Zoom. We've learned the video was made available to their students. It's been viewed more than 600,000 times on Twitter. It's some really good ones, but there are also usually some that are just playing at the bottom and drives me crazy. It was almost a knowing type of violence, as if he was co-signing. Eric Williams is a D.C. civil rights attorney and Georgetown alumnus. He encouraged alumni to pull their financial support of the school if sellers remained on staff. What's especially troubling about the professor's statements about black students scoring at the bottom is that... We don't know if that's true or not. William says one must put this latest incident in context. Georgetown University was built on land owned by the Jesuit priests of Maryland. In 1838, they sold 272 slaves to pay off the school. This latest incident really cast a dark pail on the university's efforts to show some type of institutional equity. The Black Law Student Association, backed by thousands of students, staff, and alumni, called for the professor's immediate firing. The dean released a statement promising more work, quote, to address the many structural issues of racism reflected in this painful incident. It has to go also into the hiring of professors who are conscious and aware of how to teach in a multicultural society. According to the dean's statement, Professor Batson will remain on administrative leave pending an investigation. His students will be regraded without his input. An informational session is scheduled for tomorrow. Delia Gonsalves, WUSA 9. Now, with that being said, brothers and sisters, do you see what I'm talking about? For all these dudes who talking this nonsense about what we should and what we should not do and how we need to be rocking and it's not, no racism is not real and all that foolishness. Do you see this? Do you see this? Here's a little more, it's another tidbit. 52 attorneys were handed two papers. One of them said John Brown, and they clearly stated he was a black student. The other one said John Brown, and he was a white student. 
Both these papers were the exact same paper. They were handed to 52 attorneys. They graded the black paper at 29%. How, one of the notes on the paper was, how did he get in here? He went to Columbia. He's not equipped to be here. The exact same paper. He has potential. We're going to work with him and things of that nature. So you can't even get a fair shake in law school. But oh, those are just, and then the propagandists will go. Those are just those instances. You can't choose that. Well, you know, like, uh, why are these cops fear for their lives? Because those are those, those instances, right? The instances that you have when the one or two, I don't remember, I don't hear on the news a whole lot of brothers shooting at the cops. So those are just the incidents, right? But again, man, this is why I say what I say. When people argue with me and fight with me and call me biased and say I, I, I don't, I'm one-sided and I need to do more work and things of that nature. But here's proof positive that historically white institutions are a flawed in, in environment. Now, just because I'm a lover of HBCUs don't mean that it ain't some of these self-loathing brothers and sisters as these HBCUs that'll do the same thing. But I'll ask you this. Let's say those people who had the jaded point of view and treated our brothers and sisters' papers as if they, as if they were less than, right? Let's say those papers were less than. Isn't that the purpose of going to an institution of higher learning? Because I'm into the law is a complex thing. The law isn't simple. It's a complex animal. It is always twisting, turning, and growing at all times. So if it's always twisting, turning, and growing at all times, and if you doubt what I'm saying, all you have to do is look at the United States Constitution. It is a living, breathing document that can be that was op that was left open ended. So in the event times come about, you can change and contort them in accordance to what's going on right now. So the law does the same thing. Uh, to quote there, good mantra, the law is, up for is to be interpreted each and every situation, not a ironclad situation. So if that's the case, and it's all it's an ever growing, ever learning, ever developing thing. If I'm in here, and if I'm here right here, I should be there. Because you should teach me how to argue this. You should teach me how to articulate this. You should teach me how to write these things out. Therefore, I can have a grasp of the law. And once I have a grasp of the law, I can continue to develop the law and continue to feed the law. Instead, as Dr. Greg Carr, a PhD in Africana Studies at University of Howard, head of Africana Studies at the University of Howard, PhD in law at Ohio State University, and his law degree from Ohio State University stated, that's the purpose of law school, so you can tell, uh, develop the mind for legal purposes. It's not, not, it's not my words. I'm a criminal justice major. I'm not a law major. I, got, I took a law class or two, but they ain't getting me nowhere. I wasn't even close to being an attorney, but that's what we're going to do. So when you don't have the ability to fairly grade, you potentially come from substandard academic uh, areas of academics, but not when you come from uh, Columbia Law. Nah, I mean, Columbia Co uh, University in New York City is one of the Ivy League schools, so you have African education, but the, with the paper you thought was a white boy, it was cool. So these are the things we're up against. So instead of writing folks off and telling people they're using excuses and things of that nature and, and, uh, and assuming that the law is right, because history shows us that we don't get a fair shake with most things. I'm not telling you to quit. I'm telling you to persevere. I'm telling you to draw an alliance to somebody and someone who clearly has your best interest in mind. And if that has to be HBCU, then so be it. Maybe it's a trade school right now, so you have continuing education. Maybe at some point in the midst of you being an auto mechanic, that's where your heart is. You will say, hey, you know what? I want to become a uh, mechanical engineer and develop a car. Or I want to learn graphics so I can, you know, I want to learn how to code so I can be on the cutting edge of cars. Coding so I can be on the cutting edge of cars. See, what I, would, I, what I 
would ask you to do with your grandchildren, some of us, children, some of us, and young people who are watching, is ask this question to yourself if you're a young person, to your child if you're a grandchild, and your grand, I mean, if you're a, a, a parent, and your grandchild if you're a grandparent, if you had as much money as Michael Jordan, what would you do? And the answer to that question is traditionally what you would do for the rest of your life. Because that's what you love to do. For example, I played the Illinois State Lottery tonight. If I win, Late Rent Loud Music Studio is going to be decked out. We're going to be killing them. I'm still doing my show because I love my folks. I like giving this information. I like enhancing the minds of my people as much as I can. I'm going to be, I have more time to do research. I have more time to dedicate to the education of my people, the caring of my people, and the meeting of people who are making a difference in this world to introduce them to my folks. That's what I would do. Because this is fun. I'm an extremely talkative person. Loquacious is what they call it. I like to talk. I like to share. I like their hands. And I'm down for humanity. That's why I do this. Tomorrow, it's going to be a totally different show. You're going to hear a lot of cussing. You're going to hear a lot of hollering and screaming. But it's all in love because that's the way men do it. We're going to talk about some things that you might not want to hear about. We're going to talk about things you want to hear about. We're going to talk about some things you need, need to hear about. We're going to argue about sports. We're going to invite some of my friends who think they know everything. We already think we know everything, but it's going to be good old-fashioned fun. And then, you know, we're going to drop the line in the chat room. And then if you want to come in and you want to get cussed out, you want to cuss us out too, you come on home. 10 o'clock tomorrow morning, Central Standard Time. That's 11 Eastern Standard Time. That's 9 Pacific Standard Time. It's called the Jaw Jackets. I got my man Robert Orr and my man TC. They they welcome me in, man. They, 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 man, we're going to do it on your platform. We want you to be a part of it. Cool. It's on. Thank you, Treat. Much love. But I just want you guys, man, to realize what we're going through right here, man. It ain't for everybody, man. College ain't for everybody. And realize what's going on. Last story, and the story that's going to wrap it up is, is an almost feel good story, right? That story is this. That story is Evanston, Illinois. Shout out to Evanston, Illinois for making a solid attempt. <laughs> Evanston, Illinois is a suburb just to the north of us, and they attempted to make room a, a, an attempt at a small reparations project. This is a pilot project that's going to potentially give people $25,000. They tell me you should use it for a home voucher and a sister, Cicely Fleming. She's an a, a alderman in Evanston, and she has questions. She brought up the questions that I brought up Tuesday. Why should I have to spend it this way? Who, who gets it first and things of that nature? The reason I'm telling you this is they're still in the voting stages. It's supposed to get voted on the 22nd of March, and I just want to salute them for even making the attempt. But as, as our sister Cicely stated, she don't want this to be the model for reparations. This this isn't reparations. This is the this is uh this is the mercurial cone on the cut biggest a, a, a damn gunshot wound. That's all it is. It is the treatment. It is the it is an attempt at triage. It is it is the 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 tying the belt across your uh, leg when one of your friends gets shot. It's not reparations. These wicked ass people in the United States of America try to pretend that reparations is a word of the family. You damaged us. You damaged us to the point America talks to you. You damaged me and my people to the point that some of us hate each other and more important, we hate ourselves. You stripped us of everything that's important of us. You stripped us of our name. A lot of people oh, don't mean nothing to me, but it does. Because I take pride in my last name being Williams, and that's my dad's last name, my grandfather's last name. If my last name wouldn't be Williams, I take pride in my mom's maiden name, which is Pollard, P-O-L-L-A-R-D. Because George and Richard was two bad motherfuckers. George Williams, Richard Pollard was two bad motherfuckers. My grandmothers, Maddie and Dolores, two bad sisters. I take pride in that. I know my I know the history of my family. I know my grandfather comes from uh, 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 Rosewood, Florida. I know my other grandfather comes from Arkansas. 
I know my great grandmother. That's the cotton comes from uh, 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 Mississippi, and I know my great grandfather Theodore Whitmore comes from Arkansas. I know my grandmother's family comes from Alabama. I know that Nat Turner's my cousin. That means a lot. And when you strip people of things like that, I can only go so far back. But when you can go further back, you see the pride. And you find out that this dude is your cousin and that dude is your cousin. And it brings pride and lets you know the, the things that you can accomplish. Y'all took that from me, man. Y'all took that from my brothers, my sisters, my nieces, nephews, cousins, friends, and neighbors. And a lot of my neighbors. So reparations is old. You took our God because when you can pray to God and you waiting on him to answer your prayers, whether you're religious or not, it's not the issue. Some people are. If you're not, save it. But some people use that spirituality to draw on their ancestors to make them a greater situation. As it was taught to me, Jesus walks around. The entity that you call Jesus walks around amongst us and uplifts us. Our ancestors puts him in the right place so he can be there for you. So our ancestors, we're not slaves. We're not descendants of slaves. We are descendants of the enslaved African prisoners of war captured from the motherland. See, because some people in Africa were warriors. Some people in Africa were tapestry people that made, like the Ashanti tribe, that captured the uh, tapestry people that made this cloth itself that is identifiable throughout the entire world as a symbol of who I am. Right there, the Ashantis, and I got to find the name of that other tribe. See, think when you find out things like that, it brings some um, a, a similar surprise. My daughter is a seamstress. She didn't even know her great grandmother was one. The Lord's part. See what I'm saying? My mother, and my aunt, they ain't had new clothes. They had tailor made clothes. Cause their mother made clothes. Pass it on. I pass it right to my my daughter. I got to tell her about that. My bad, but that's my bad though. She don't know because I ain't tell her not because it was a race. And if I ever die, she may never know. But I think my sister told her because my sister, my oldest sister, bought her some machine. So I'm 99.9% sure she said, Your grandmother Lois made clothes. I didn't tell her so, but my sister was able to tell her. And when you when you strip that from the ability of people to know who they are, they think they're less than. And when they think they less than, they achieve less. And when they achieve less, they strive for less. And when they strive for less, they become drug dealers and gangbangers and hookers and, and, and skanks and, and, and degenerate adults, male and women, deadbeat dads and dudes who recidivism rate is insane. That's what you do when you strip us of that. So you owe us, man. We built this country. We've been under the reign of tyranny by these damn police officers, by these half-assed politicians. And other dumbasses that walk the street that think they're better than us. So you owe us reparations. So, instead of you, salute your sister Benita. She gonna be coming on network soon. We, we spoke, you know, we, we spoke via text about her show. Hopefully, she makes up her mind. If she comes, if not, she always supports me. So, mad love to the sister Benita. Mad love. I hope to see you soon. Hope you have hope to have you on here soon. Big ups. But you owe us, America. You are my folks. You are my grand folks. You are my great grand folks. You are all my ancestors. My ancestors that's in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean that was shark bait. You owe us, man. So for y'all that say that they don't, that's cool too. But I'm just letting you know. I'm not trying to hear none of that. I'm not going to hate you, but I'm not going to be bothered with you either. With that being said, I want y'all to continue to support these businesses. That I put in front of you, first and foremost, my homeboy Chris Style Guys. Look him up online. And then I want you to support my sister in the in the chat room from Trade Naturals. Look her up online. So would you support my sister Kiana Culture Closet here in Chicago? Check her out online. And I want you to support my homegirl Naisha. Uh Sapphire, I can't think of it. Sapphire. She makes candles. She makes sister candles from the scrinatch. They super dope. I want y'all to start supporting these people, man. I'm going to start having them come on, talk for about five or ten minutes about what they're doing and how you can get in contact with them so you can support them, man. Support, support, support. They support me. I need you to support them. Just like that. I, I'm, I'm bringing on authors. I'm bringing on, I'm, uh, I'm putting together a parent, uh, 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 a parent summit so we can talk about parenting today 
how it used to be, how it should be, how it could be, and what's re what's been removed. That's my next summit. Either I'm gonna do I'm gonna do it next Saturday. I'm trying to get five people together. If you want to be a part of, you know how to get in contact. You got your number. You got my number. Hit me up at hrap underscore b. I ain't got to know you to be on my show, but if you get on here acting the damn fool, your ass is gonna be gone like this. But if you come on here talking like you got some good sense, even, I don't have to agree with you. First and foremost, I don't have to agree with anything that anybody ever said in the history of my show. I'm not asking you to be a puppet. But you're going to say it respectful or you're going to get the hell up out of here. That's all I'm saying. You see what I'm saying? Now, with that being said, man, I want to thank each and every one of you for tuning in. If you're a background listener, salute to you. Big ups to you. If you came in the chat room and created a profile, came in, I salute to be a participant in this show. Big ups to you. Mad love to you, too. I ain't going to say all your names because don't nobody care who you are but me. Tune in tomorrow. If you want to have some fun, man, you want to see just how silly I can get, you want to see how me and my homies, TC and, and Robert Roy, I can fool, tune in tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. We're going to cut. We're going to be cussing. Don't, don't invite your grandmom let you know what cussing sound like. We're going to be cussing. We're going to be hollering. We're going to be screaming. It's going to be a ball. The homies can come in. We're going to, we, look, I got room for seven more people. If you can cuss and holler and scream, act a fool, and you ain't got to be able to cuss. If you know how to act a fool and talk about people, mom, and all that type of thing, we, that's, that's the only thing we're not doing, talking about somebody, mom. We're going to have some fun, though. We're going to show you all how to get down on I Get Down. It's called the end of the bench with the jaw jackers. It's going to be fun. Tune in, man. And then Monday morning, I want you to tune in. Number one, Chief Rock, Jersey Vern. Jersey Vern. Then Tuesday evening, uh, uh, I'm going to be back. I got some more stuff. I got some Cannon songs. I got some Hershey Walker. I got some, uh, 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 I got some, uh, 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 Cannon songs, Hershey Walker. Uh, uh, what's that other clown name? Uh, 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 Cannon songs, Hershey Walker. Uh, my sister, Cheryl Underwood, she ain't, she ain't jump out the window. That's a segment on the jaw jacket. She didn't jump out the window, but we're gonna talk about her. We're gonna talk about uh uh uh, uh Candace on oh oh the sister Stacy Dad. See, I ain't, I have to save a little bit for y'all, man. I gotta save a little bit. But I'm I'm, I'm gonna be there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep it all the way funky for y'all, man. If y'all wanna support the show, man, you know, I'm gonna hit you with the Lisa McDowell. You can send a brother the type of change that uh, type of money that jingles, but you can send me the type that uh folds. At dollar sign T H A E E N D O F D A V E N C H. It's the name of the show, the end of the bench. I am H R B. We are on built for this network. You can catch this on several, several po uh, uh, podcast entities. I'm gonna go over it again. You did not miss my show. If you tell me that again, I'm gonna say, "Ah, oh, this dude is full of it." I'm gonna tell, I'm gonna start telling people to your face, "You a lie," because my show is on 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You can catch me on Spreaker.com at Built for this network with my man DJ Mad Knox, DJ, I mean DJ Mad Knox, DJ Mooka Dean, DJ Purplelicious, my man Big Illinois, Mooka Dean, uh, 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 Cheers Roundtree, James Earl, and my main man, he here in Chicago and I have my car, but being accident, time Joe come to town, so I'm having my car, get your, don't, stay your ass old time, old park, boy. love you like a little brother on my daddy's side, but stay your ass old park, home and get my car hit, every time you in town, somebody hit my car. But if you can't catch up, catch with us up on Spreaker.com, go to Spreaker.com, YouTube, for Bill for This Network, I, I, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, AHA Radio, Google Podcasts, CastBox, Deezer Podcasts, Addict, or wherever you get your podcast downloaded to. This is your man, H Rap B. As I say every week, dream those dreams and man up and world up and live those dreams. It's life without dreams flows in black and white. Life with dreams flows in technical and surround sound. And I'm going to tell you this, I'm going to tell you a thousand times. Get on top of your shit, because if you don't get on top of it, you're going to end up on the bottom. Two fingers, one word. It's your man, H. Rap, and I am out. We are built for this network, for the strong, not the weak.